this brief cold day, a little bit of breeze, but the sun is always shining, and we know God is here with us today. And uh, we're going to open in a word of prayer. I'll turn it over to Hunter, and then those of you who would like to step up and speak, you're welcome to do so. So let's do that at this time. Father, we are so thankful for Mr. Job's life and what he meant to Hunter and this precious family. Father, we just pray that you give Hunter the peace that passes all understanding. Father, it's kind of hard to lose a mom and a dad all in the same year, but we know that your grace is sufficient. We know that if we believe and trust in you, you will give us peace. Father, I pray that you give that peace as Hunter goes into Christmas this week with his family. I pray that you give him uh, strength to get through that, for we know that his father and mother are not at the table this year, but we know uh, that they are with you and that they are at peace, and uh, Father, we just are so thankful for that. Father, we're just thankful for those precious people here that, that are here to support Hunter, and now as we enter into your service and your time of fellowship, I pray that you be with us and give us strength. In Jesus' name we pray. summary of some uh, newspaper articles from the 1960s and uh, she had written up a summary on the Coates Museum um, website and she posted this on October 20th, 2017. I'm going to read a little bit here and then I'm going to get to the part where my dad actually was mentioned here but I thought this was kind of appropriate at the time. Anyway, it says Coates Museum News by Madeline Gale Johnson Sorrell. So the year was 1966 and the war in Vietnam was touching the households across America. During World War II, young men had left the high school setting to join other students like themselves to fight the enemies on distant continents. And now the sons and daughters of that generation were shipped to a land unlike anything they'd ever experienced. Many of them had, had delayed or dropped out of college to answer the draft. The only authority most had ever known was a stern parent or teacher who paled in comparison to the new one they met wearing the uniform bearing an assortment of stars, bars, and stripes indicating authority and their rigid commands were to be followed to a T for the sake of their comrades. Many of these young men from Coates were experiencing scenes in Vietnam that they continue to find difficult to talk about in here in 2017, the article was written. Back in the USA, Many of their parents had their fears as well, the fear of receiving a dreaded telegram or visit to share the fate of a loved one in uniform. Surely this had happened to the family of Sergeant Donald Stewart, 29 of Coates, who was the first victim from Harnett County in the Vietnam War. He was the son of Robert G. Stewart of Coates and Miss Odell Hastie. His wife was the former Wanda Adams of Andrew. His daughter was born five months after Donald had arrived in Vietnam a daughter who would never feel the warmth and grace of her father. So, anyway, I, I just want to, I realize now how blessed I was to have my father for 56 years. This poor girl never got to meet her father. And uh, I, 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 don't, I do not know her. I hope she had a wonderful life and, and had a, a, a father figure. But I realize how blessed I was to, to have my dad for 56 years. And, uh, I, I, I realize now that he has passed how much I will always miss him. Uh, anyway, let, let me continue this. It said, the death angel took another loved one from the family of Clarence Upchurch of Route 1 Coates. Mr. Upchurch, who was only 54, had died on Friday. Okay, and then there was some happy news on January 7th, on, the, on that January 17th, 1966 Daily Record edition. Mr. and Mrs. Gerald Weaver were the parents of a son, Hunter Lee Weaver. <laughs> the mother was the former Elizabeth King of rural Smithfield. So my dad did make the internet. <laughs> but anyway, I, I just wanted to read that. I, 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 again, 
it's horrible this young daughter or this daughter never met her dad and I realized just how lucky I was in all my years to have my dad around uh, he, did, he did mean a lot to me I realized my, my mom and dad divorced when I was young but I did get to see my dad almost every weekend and that had gone on for I mean my 56 years of existence and especially the last 10 to 15 years I would see him almost every Sunday and, and dad had done really well until until this year, so he, he had a wonderful 88 years. Um, anyway, a couple of things about Dad. So he was born April 25th, 1934. He was 88 years and 234 days of his passing last week on December 15th. So he, he fell on June 10th and never regained his mobility until his passing. I do want to thank Betsy Johnson Hospital and done Liberty Commons Physical Therapy in Benson and Smithfield Manor Nursing Home in Smithfield and the SECU Hospice House in Smithfield for giving him the best care he could ever have received. He, he was blessed to, to be taken care of so well. Um, Dad was in the Army from October of 1953 to October of 1955. I have his dog tags here. Weaver Gerald B. Typo Blood Top and a private. Anyway, Dad, Dad left the Army in, of October of 1955. While he was in the Army, he spent one year in France with his fellow servicemen helping civilians with general maintenance in the French countryside. Huh. This is an interesting story he shared with me one time, but while he was in France on a train with other servicemen going through the countryside, the railroad went on strike. So they spent a couple of days in the countryside with a train just immobile. The strike apparently was alleviated and then they went on their way. Of course, they were servicemen being in the countryside on a broken down or a stopped train isn't going to have any impact on them. Um, on June 11th, 1955, Dad attended the 24 Hours of Le Mans auto race in Le, in Le Mans, France. I guess the other side of the Atlantic, I guess they refer to it as Le Mans. Um, when the most catastrophic accident in motorsport history occurred, killing one driver, 83, injuring 83 spectators, and injuring at least 120 more, I'm sorry, it killed one driver, 83 spectators were, were killed, and 120 more spectators were injured. This was a road course, but Dad was nowhere near, near the location of the accident. I know he shared some photos of me that he had taken that day over the years that he had taken, I guess, prior to the start of the race. Anyway, my dad loved dogs, and he was especially fond of Ella, who died back in the spring of this year. She was about 14 years old. He would take her everywhere, and in the summertime, he would leave her in his minivan with the air conditioning running. I often wondered, you know, would somebody come and take Dad's minivan when he saw the dog was there and the air and the, the minivan was running? But she was such a good guard dog, nobody could get near the van without her barking. So Ella was effectively his security system, or, or his alarm system in his minivan. Dad was a great cook. He cooked simple meals of barbecued chicken, pork, pork and ribs, and he made great chicken pastry. Dad also had this knack for taking care of his dog. If there were any, uh, if there was any food that he did not cook, he would put it in the refrigerator or freezer and then later cook it for his dog. Dad's the only person I know who would cook for his dog. But he did love Ella so much. Um, Dad loved having a garden with fresh vegetables and had one every year until the deer populations overtook his garden. Somebody had instructed Dad to put a portable radio near his garden and it would keep the deer away. And so he tried this and it did not work. And when I inquired about how well it did work, he told me that the deer ate everything but the radio. So my, dad, my dad was really good at estimating items regarding farming, construction, automobiles, and equipment. When I was a kid, we would play a game where I would read classified ads in the automobile section of the Museum Observer, and he would guess the asking 
price, and I would be so impressed as to how close he was to the actual asking price, often getting the price to the exact amount. Um, several years back during the mortgage crisis, Dad had purchased some two by fours at Lowe's and stated how low the price was. I inquired how could the lumber prices be so low with fuel prices being so high at the time. And he looked at me like I was not thinking clearly and stated, there's no building going on. So I had four semesters of economics in college and it didn't even register with me that the lack of demand kept the lumber prices down temporarily. With minimal education, he understood the economics of the construction industry since he spent his entire working career doing commercial construction with David Jones and later with Barney Old Contracting. He retired around the age of 70. So, Dad and my cousin Tony were like brothers. They both loved to hunt and fish and taught me so much when I was a child right up until my college years. Dad's favorite sport was stock car racing. He would listen to or watch races nearly every Sunday afternoon during the last car season. A couple other interesting facts about Dad. He was from the old school. He never owned a credit card. He never had a credit card in his name. Um, he, uh, he always went to the bank. He paid with cash or wrote checks. Um, he never had a computer. Um, and he, uh, he, he lived a very simple life. But he, he lived uh, his 88 years. I mean, he, I think he really enjoyed life in 88 years. Another interesting thing, Dad purchased a used Burgundy 1970 Buick in the early 70s from a local Ford dealer, dealership named Sexton Ford, and the salesman informed him it was previously owned by a hockey player. So just a few weeks back, while cleaning up some of his old items from a dresser in his home, I found a folder that stayed in the glove compartment of that Buick, and the previous Aldridge Maz Bastion, who actually who once played with the Toronto Maple Leafs, was with the Detroit Red Wings as a, a coach in their minor league system, and actually became the GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins, who were actually in town here last night as the Hurricanes played them. But anyway, I remember Dad giving me this story that December 30th, 1969, Detroit Hockey Club, Detroit, Michigan, Driver Baz Bastion. Okay. In his latter years, Dad really suffered from rheumatoid arthritis and dis 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 disfigured his fingers and toes. While this was painful, he never complained about the pain. And over the years, Dad had a number of bone spurs and broken ribs when I was a child after he had fallen off a ladder doing some construction work. Never, dead, but never, never complained about pain. In these last six months of his life, it was just really difficult to watch his health deteriorate. But he was always in a great mood. He enjoyed having people visit him. Um, he, he thought the world of the nurses that took care of him. He was very grateful, and I'm most grateful as well for the health care that he, that he received over the last six months as his health deteriorated. I already miss him, and when I walk into his home now and he's not there, it, it just feels like a different place. But I realize I, I was blessed to have 56, almost 57 years with a wonderful dad, and I am going to miss him so much. Another thing I learned about dad is I always gave him his privacy and didn't occupy his space or meddle with things around his home, but as I was cleaning up a few items of his home, I found that he had kept all of these cards that I'd given on birthdays, Father's Day, and different holidays throughout the years. I never knew he kept all of those until I stumbled upon them one day uh, a few weeks back, but I realized there, there's so many things I think he really, he really appreciated about me that I never knew was the case at the time. Again, I, I had a wonderful dad, and, and, and I, I already miss him so much, but you know, I, I feel blessed to have had him for nearly 57 years. He was a great person and treated him really well. And, and that's really all I have to say.
mama later. It was funny because he gave me one of those, um, what do you call it, the farmer says, when you, go, you put it on the rooster and you pull it. Well, I was a little bit too old for that, but we never let Gerald know any different. Because <laughs> my mama later said, he, I can't remember exact words because it was a long time ago. But um, I knew from that his kindness and the, the talking and he'd come and want to talk to Daddy and Daddy wasn't really that much of a talker compared to Gerald and myself. <laughs> so, but I know that he would ride around the field and see him with Ella in the truck going down to the pond and he'd ride and um, always having something to say and friendly. And Kevin, did you want to say anything? But that is true, and Joy said it well, and Hunter said it well, and I was listening um, about those stories that I've heard. But he was, Ella was his buddy. Anyone else? All right, let us pray. Father, again, we're thankful for these memories that flood our soul, for they are precious. And uh, death can take the person away, but can never take the memories. I pray that Hunter holds them near and dear to his heart, the family, and in the days and the weeks to come. Father, I pray that they give them comfort. Father, now we've come as far as we possibly can with Mr. Gerald and we give him back to you Father knowing that one special day when you return we'll all be together in heaven those that know you Father we're just so thankful for that son you sent to a manger over 2,000 years ago and this week as we celebrate the birth of the Savior that Savior come to save us and Father I pray that there's someone here today that doesn't know you that they accept you into their heart so that that place called heaven is their eternal home Father, we're thankful for the life of Mr. Gerald Weaver. We ask now that you go with us as we depart and as we fold the flag and as we play taps. May you be glorified and honored. In Jesus' name.
This concludes our graveside service. We'll stay.